everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shroud here today to talk about this guy. This is the Intel Core i9-7900X processor. This is the newest flagship part from Intel in their HEDT high performance, high end desktop product line. Um, this is, you know, we've, we've talked about this before. We've seen specifications out there. We've really talked about some of the new features as well, but this is now the time we're able to show you performance, talk about gaming and multi-threaded and single-threaded and what all that means. Uh, first, a quick overview is probably warranted here. This is a 10-core, 20-thread part, 3.3 gigahertz base clock, 4.3 gigahertz boost clock, and a 4.5 gigahertz extra, extra boost clock, which is only good on the two most favorite cores on this particular die. DDR4-2666, so a little bit of improvement there. 44 PCIe lanes, 140 watt TDP, and a $999 price point. Um, now, the important specs here are how it compares to the 6950X, which is the Broadwell E 10 core variant. Now, you get an 800 megahertz boost clock increase and a 500 megahertz boost boost clock with the max turbo technology 3.0 whatever they want to call it so you're getting a significant frequency increase in this uh jump from broadwell e to skylake and a little bit of ipc along the way and also with the higher clocks you get a 700 hundred dollar lower price point if you remember all the kind of hatred and vitriol that came with the 1700 hundred dollar launch of the 6950x this is 999 still a very expensive processor no doubt uh, but a 700 hundred dollar drop is also a significant amount. Uh, now there are some architectural changes in this. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail here. I just encourage you to go to the review I posted at PCPer.com to look at that. You've got AVX 512 edition. Uh, you have changes to the cache hierarchy, more L2, less L3 on a per core basis. It kind of affects the latency of things. It's uh, there's a mess, uh, a, sorry, a mesh CPU interconnect inside that die now. Uh, we talked about uh, the Turbo Boost Max Technology 3.0 improvements, as well as this gets speed shift, which is not as necessarily as important on, uh, on a desktop part, but it's nice to see it kind of thrown out there. Uh, one thing worth noting on the ping kind of discussion and the cache latency, if you remember when we did the Ryzen 7 1800X performance, um, there was a discrepancy in how long it took cores to ping to each other, how long the communication took from thread to thread on that die. As it turns out, because of the cache hierarchy and the mesh implementation on this die, this actually goes up over the previous generation as well. The ping times are longer, so it's a little bit slower in the core-to-core -core communication on this processor versus the previous gen. And we'll talk about a second that actually affects gaming performance. And if this all sounds very familiar, it probably should. Um, also, this is a new motherboard, X299 chipset, 2066 LGA socket. Uh, one benefit is you get to use the same coolers. So that's, that's kind of a plus. We were able to kind of not have to worry about adapters or anything like that. So uh, advantage there. Quickly on performance. Single threaded performance on this processor is actually really impressive because of that 4.5 gigahertz max turbo boost 3.0, um, you're getting really close to single threaded performance of the 7700K, which up until now has kind of been the undisputed king of single threaded performance. Uh, you're getting 20 to 25% better single threaded performance over the 6950X, the previous 10 core part. And in terms of multi-threaded performance, you're getting 15 to 25% better performance than the 6950X. So because of those clock speed advantages and some of the architectural tweaks, this is a significantly faster part in both single-threaded and multi-threaded and kind of uh, is able to almost attain that goal of what Intel wanted with the 6950X initially, which was to provide a processor that had the best of both worlds. Top single-threaded performance when you needed it, top multi-threaded performance when you needed it as well. I referenced 1080p gaming performance just a second ago. It is lower on the 7900X than it is on the 6950X. Uh, and that is a interesting uh, thing to see happen, especially in light of the Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 5 gaming performance uh, things that we've talked about. And it actually is happening for the exact same reason. Because the thread-to-thread -thread communication is a little bit slower, um, certain gaming workloads, and, and in our cases, I think like four or five out of the eight that we tested at 1080p, the performance is enough to impact to make this processor slower than the last, even with the clock speed improvements that the 7900X actually has. So that's important to note. Uh, and it's one of those things we'll be doing a lot more research on as we move forward. Uh, but again, 
if people were willing to make the argument that a $500 processor is not really the target of 1080p gaming, probably a $1,000 processor is not the target of 1080p gaming either. But regardless, it's a data point that is completely valid and worth uh, checking in on. Um, also kind of worth noting, this processor, it is double the price of the Ryzen 7 1800X, but it does, does still perform better than the 1800X in those 1080p gaming tests. The drop that this CPU sees is pretty minor in most cases than what we saw uh, with the Ryzen parts. Overclocking, I didn't spend a whole lot of time overclocking with it, but really quickly I can tell you I was able to get this part to 4.6 gigahertz on all 10 cores uh, at a 1.28 volt uh, setting in the ASUS BIOS, but it was kind of spiking our temperatures to up around 100 C, wasn't comfortable with that, so we moved it down to 4.5 gigahertz and I got the voltage down to 1.24 volts giving us a kind of a sustained temperature on our workload of about 83 degrees Celsius with a 240 millimeter uh, all-in-one cooler. So pretty impressive results there, being able to get all 10 cores up from 4 to 4.5 with very little effort on our part. But all of this does come at the expense of power. The 7900X uses, based on our measurements, 70 watts more power than the 6950X. Uh, which is surprising, especially considering that the TDP of both of these parts is 140 watts, supposedly unchanged. The, uh, this seems to be more of a, a move that Intel is making with these parts as AMD made with Ryzen. If you remember the Ryzen 7 1800X had a TDP of 95 watts, but we saw that it drew significantly more than Intel parts rated at 91 watt. TDP. So there's a little bit of a, a debate going on here about what the TDP measurements are, uh, what motherboard vendors are supposed to be doing, what we should be measuring, uh, but it's clear that this part, in order to get those frequency increases, uh, even at stock settings, is using a significant amount of power. Now, if you have a, a, a pretty standard cooler for somebody who's buying a $1,000 CPU, it's not going to be an issue, uh, but just something worth noting for sure. In conclusion, obviously I'm going to point you to PCPro.com to get all the review uh, data and graphs and cache latencies and all those intricate details if you want them. This is uh, the, uh, a new 10-core processor that is $700 less expensive than the previous one. It is 15 to 20 to 25 percent faster in single and multi-threaded workloads. Um, and that's, I mean, that, that's pretty much it, right? You, you know you want this part or not but there's a lot of other caveats that go along with it. Intel's already announced 12, 14, 16, and 18 core processors, obviously at much higher prices. So we know that this is not gonna be the best multi-threaded part for very long, but will it remain the best single-threaded part in that Intel HED line? And obviously, by sometime next month, we'll have AMD's Threadripper processors that go up to 16 cores as well and see how they compete with these particular parts. So chances are, if uh, you're in the, in the, uh, the mix to build a machine based on a, a platform like this, you're probably gonna wanna wait a little bit. Threadripper in July, uh, 12 core parts in August, up to 18 core parts in October from Intel. There's a lot going on in the high performance desktop realm. Uh, but this is, you know, I would say a surprisingly impressive release from Intel for the performance increases, the price decreases, uh, with the one caveat of that 1080p gaming that we've already discussed. So like I said, go to PCPro.com, check out the full review, and uh, thanks guys for watching. See you next time.